vintage rough And it takes all that you've got But he's been here Just waiting for you to knock To take his hand Welcome to Life on the Rock. I'm Doug Berry along with Father Anthony. We are your Rock House compadres for the night. Father Mark is not with us tonight. That sounds kind of heavy when you say he's not with us. <laughs> but he's not here. He's actually away on covert assignment, once again, somewhere in the, in the, in the darker regions of the world, bringing the light of Christ. Does that, does that sound right? That's true, because he's Father Bond, Father Mark Bond. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Perfect right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, Father Anthony, uh, good to have you on the show it's sitting in tonight. Great to be with you, Doug. Yeah, I always love it when you're with us here. Uh, tonight, we got a media night. This is great. First of all, our first segment here, we're going to be touching on a movie that's going to be coming out this weekend, in fact, so opening tonight called Mom's Night Out. We'll be addressing it and uh, just briefly touching into a couple interviews that Father Mark had with a couple of the actresses from the movie. And then later on, uh, the bulk of the show is about uh, Skip and AJ's Fantastic Voyage. This is an amazing, amazing new program that's going to be airing tonight on EWTN. And we've got Brian Shields with us. We've got Father Tom Stanley and Rich Morrow from Lumen TV. And they put together a, a, just an amazing program. You're going to love this. And I'm looking real forward to having them on the show tonight. But uh, first of all, we're going to talk about this Mom's Night Out movie. It's a movie that when I first heard about it, I was excited to go. A movie called Mom's Night Out. What man wouldn't be excited to go to a movie called <laughs> Mom's Night Out? But uh, it would be very fitting for you, Doug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just to get a little insight into moms, I suppose. But uh, no, it, it's a good movie, great movie. And uh, Father Mark had the great opportunity of being on set when they were shooting it here in Birmingham, and was uh, blessed to be able to interview a couple of the actresses. And the first interview that we're going to go to here is uh, a piece from. Father Mark and Sarah Drew. So take a look at this from Mom's Night Out, the actress Sarah Drew. Hi, I'm here with Sarah Drew, the lead in uh, Mom's Night Out. Uh, tell us about the movie, an overview from your perspective. Mom's Night Out is a, uh, is a family comedy about a mom who is uh, a mom of three small children, um, very energetic children, who is pretty stressed out and exhausted and her husband encourages her to go out for a night out with her girlfriends which she does and when she does everything goes wrong everything goes wrong for them everything goes wrong for the husbands back at home with the kids and it's um, it's a comedy about everything kind of falling to pieces and then coming back together again and what's the message you wish uh, people would take away from this movie um, my hope for for this movie is I I want women and especially moms to walk out of the theater feeling like superheroes. I want them to feel like their job is the most important job on the planet, and I want them to feel honored and celebrated and lifted up. I think um, moms and especially stay-at-home moms are sort of the most unsung heroes in our culture today. I don't think we I don't think we celebrate them and we don't honor them in the media. We don't. Um, we don't celebrate them for what they do, and their job is, I can't think of a more important job than minding and uh, than molding the minds and the hearts of young people. Um, and it's exhausting. It's so exhausting. So anyway, I want them to walk out with a huge smile on their face feeling celebrated. And that, that is the message, right, that uh, moms are love and they are enough, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you feel that the movie conveys that. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, what's what drew me to this movie is is the journey that my character Allison takes on it. You know, she goes from a place of feeling like she's not she's not a good enough mom. She's not a good enough wife. She's not a good enough Christian. She's not a good enough friend. She's just nothing she does is ever enough. And through the journey of the whole night out, she comes to a place where she realizes, confronts the fact that she actually is enough and that she is loved and that um, and she feels celebrated by the end of it. So I, um, I, I think that that I think the movie does a really great job of telling that story, and that's what drew me to it because I I relate to that so on such a deep level. And how does your faith personally? Uh, your father's a pastor. Can you talk about your personal faith and those stresses and expectations you feel as a mom? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, honestly, for me, I've lived a lot of my life not feeling like I'm enough and feeling like I'm um, constantly needing to earn not only my husband's approval, but Hollywood's approval and God's approval and uh, my friend's approval. There's just, it's it's a constant. It's I'd a constant interrupt you that because you're a Hollywood actress, very yeah. successful. And uh, in our culture, that is so esteemed today. And yet you'd still feel that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? Um, I... It's, it's never, if, if you're looking for your sense of identity in what anybody else is telling you outside of, I believe, what God tells you who you are, um, I don't feel like it's ever going to fill you. I, I, that's been my journey anyway. I've, um, I, I, I had a moment where, you know, I became a series regular on like the number one drama on television and still that was not satisfying that was not enough but I didn't feel like I had enough approval I felt like I needed more I needed more and it was in that moment that I realized okay this thing kind of owns me this thing owns me and if I continue to live in a way where this thing owns me it's just going to lead to death it's not going to lead to life and so um so I've I've kind of had my own journey through all of that my entire life in in every relationship and the faith how has that helped you in that journey? Um, I think the biggest the biggest thing was having my son. I um, you know I, I spent a lot of my life feeling like I wasn't enough for God. That I felt like he kind of put up with me. I didn't feel like he loved me or he delighted in me. I just sort of felt like he dealt with me. But you know he sent his son to die for me, so I'm okay. I guess I'm safe. But I didn't feel cherished. I didn't feel loved. And um, when I had my son. There's something that happens when you look into the face of that little person that you housed in your body for nine months and that you participated in the knitting together in the mother's womb, like you participated in the creation of this child. And looking at him before he'd done anything right or, or wrong, I just loved him. I just, I was completely enchanted with him and I cherished him with every fiber of my being and I think it was that moment that made me realize that's how God feels about me. You know she brings up a great point there father and I think that's a very common thing you know I, I've struggled with that I know others around the country probably as a priest you know hear that a lot too. Um, you know, the, the uh, real depth of understanding that I'm valuable in God's eyes. Right, right. And that I mean something. And you know, when she said that, I, th I was thinking the same thing before she even worded it that way. A lot of parents, I think, do. I look at my five children, you know, that God has blessed us with, seven, two miscarriages, two with our Lord, but the five living, and I look at them and I think, unconditional love. And I'm a, I'm a weak, sinful human man. You know, but I had this unconditional love for my own kids. How much more God must have for us. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And that tenderness, you yeah. know, that we can enter in with such freedom. Yeah. You know, children have such abandonment and trust in their parents, yeah. and that's what we're to bring to our relationship with God. Yeah. And then we get skewed, and we start yeah. thinking that we have to <laughs> earn, and we have to prove something. Right. And, and uh, I mean, granted, God does want us to, to, you know, engage in the world with the gifts He gives us and do something, but it's not about winning approval in, right. the, in the process. It's just about, you know, be my witness in the world, my testimony. And, sure. But you're valuable regardless. And that's an incredible thing to think about. You know, the power of this movie, you know, I, I like what she said, you know, really celebrate motherhood. You know, it's true. Our world beats up motherhood pretty good, beats up fatherhood too, but really beats up motherhood. The women who really commit and give their lives to their families, to their children. So I, I really am excited to see that this movie's come out and uh, really help build that up and that, that real gift of motherhood that, uh, that the devil hates. The devil hates uh, a woman who was willing to give her life over as a mother and commit herself. You know, you think about a mother who really imitates the words of Jesus at the Last Supper, this is my body, giving it for you. When she gives her body up and she says to her children, to, to God, to her husband, this is my body, giving it for you. And ladies, you know that's true because as soon as you have that baby, you don't get your body back, do you? It just doesn't <laughs> come back in many different ways. But it's a beautiful <laughs> gift, a beautiful sacrifice. Uh, we now have Patricia Heaton. Father Mark was also able to sit down with Patricia Heaton, who stars in Mom's Night Out, which again premieres this weekend. Patricia Heaton with Father Mark. Patricia Heaton, and uh, one of the stars of the movie, Mom's Night Out. Uh, could you tell us about your role in the film? Um, I play the pastor's wife, Sandra, and um, what I liked about the role was the fact that when I did my research about pastor's wives, the sort of number one word that came up 
uh, describing them was loneliness and isolation. And that was really interesting to me, but as I thought about it, of course it made sense because they're not a, in any official capacity and yet they have to sort of behave that way. They have to keep up appearances because they represent the church. Their kids have to behave a certain way and get a sort of stigma about them. And um, it's often difficult for them to um, get too close to any one person in the parish or the congregation because it's, you know, they can't open up too much about their family problems. So it was interesting to me, and so this character um, is sort of struggling with trying to maintain that facade, and yet it's keeping her from really being able to relate to people. The reason I chose this film was uh, I like the character. Um, I think it's very relatable to couples who are struggling to balance young children and their marriages and their lives. It's very difficult. This is my advice for everyone who has young children. It's, it's going to be hard for about eight to ten years. Sorry, that's the truth. But if you reconcile yourself to that, there's going to be times um, during that period where you just think you married the wrong person, you, you know, you're exhausted, everybody's um, dissatisfied and resentful and grumpy because it's just hard. Kids, little kids are hard. And so um, if you know that you don't have to put a lot of stock in that, um, you probably need to do a lot of marital counseling for those 10 years so that everybody can sort out what their roles are and so your communication is good. You got to have really good communication skills when you have young children. So. Um, so this movie deals with a lot of that, so I thought that was very important. And I just love comedy, obviously, and so it's one of the reasons I took it. In your faith and your work, does that uh, shape your choices and, and how you perform your job? Definitely think uh, I look carefully at any role I pick um, to make sure that I feel comfortable doing it. It doesn't mean that every role I would do is something my children should watch. I mean they are older now so but when they were little so it doesn't mean you 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 have to do a project that every five-year-old can watch. You know so there are there will be projects that have difficult situations and you know characters who are really broken and it's important to authentically represent that in order to have an arc of to go somewhere to, for redemption. Now you have a sister, a blood sister that's a Nashville Dominican. Does she get to enjoy any of your work? I do send her um, videos for the sisters to watch because they do have some recreational time and um, particularly um, uh, on this show I do for ABC Now called The Middle. Um, we have a wonderful character, Reverend Tim Tom, and um, you know, I just, I, anytime I have something like that that she'd be interested in, I send it to her for the sisters. Also, there was a great documentary that HBO did that was nominated for an Academy Award, which you probably all saw, called God is the Bigger Elvis. And so I sent the, the sisters a copy of that because that's one of my favorite documentaries of all time. I was just, you know, it hit, sort of hit all my sweets about acting and, and Catholicism and nuns and all that stuff. And the pro-life movement, that's very close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about that? Why is that so important to you? Uh, I was raised in a very Catholic household and, um, you know, so that was the foundation of it. It was just sort of a given. And when I did my own research, I scientifically just saw that the church's position made sense scientifically, ethically, morally, culturally. Um, and so, uh, it, to me, it's kind of a no-brainer. And uh, our executive producer, he has a special needs son, Matthew, mm. and he's a big fan of yours. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you could just send, say hi to Matthew for Oh, sure. Should I look right into the camera? Okay. Hey, Matthew, this is Patricia Heaton coming to you from the set of Mom's Night Out, and thank you for being a loyal fan and supporter, and I hope I get to meet you someday.
very nice of her to uh, greet uh, Matthew yeah. that way. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I think I, we know Matthew right. uh, since he's been a little boy. It'll mean tons to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's amazing how powerful the media, you know, when we see somebody in a position like, like she's in, anybody from Hollywood in particular, carries a real weight, uh, you know, with that. You know, mm -hmm. there's something, you know, about um, the impact that God has allowed them to have. There's a tremendous responsibility on that as well. Right. You know, and, you know, now... St. Uh, John Paul II, I almost said St. Don Bosco, St. John Paul II, <laughs> I say that, actually um, was very big on encouraging actors, uh, yeah. artists, entertainers, and so forth to, to really take that responsibility seriously. Right. Well, to use whatever gift that, the, that God has given you uh, to glorify Him. You know? yeah. And I thought she addressed it very well, that uh, when you're we're speaking to the culture at all different kinds of levels, mm -hmm. and so she really weighs her roles in that regard. They're not all geared for uh, her five-year-old child, right. <laughs> um, but you know, it's still to apply her faith that what she's going to do still has a preserves a you know a moral strain there. Which is something we should all be thinking about. Oh, is the decisions that we make you know that that moral fiber that runs through it. Uh, should be there as the, the compass to yeah. guide us in the decisions we make. Okay, we're now going to take you to the trailer for Mom's Night Out, which again prepare, uh, premieres this weekend. Mom, Beck's playing in the toilet again! Surprise! We made you a Wes Shaker! Oh no, no, no. He's going to put that in his mouth and become one of the 400 estimated people that die from acute salmonella. Do not put that finger in your... It's all gonna be okay. It's all gonna be okay. Just give it five years. Year seven or five. You have to choose to do something for yourself. I planned this uh, mom's night thing what? for Saturday. You planned a mom's night? Yes, sister. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen? They could get maimed. I could lose both children. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Wow, you look amazing. Ladies, tonight is our night, and we look good. I cannot find your reservation. I just want to sit down with my friends without three little people clawing all over me. You're getting a little angry, and it's doing something ugly to your face. <laughs> Joey, you're supposed to be watching our baby. Who has him? Bones. He's at the tattoo parlor. Who would bring a baby to a tattoo parlor? That's dumb. I know. Right? That is real yeah. dumb. OK, so here's the plan. <laughs> we take them inside, get their hands stamped, and they can't get out, like Shawshank Redemption. Bones, my baby. I called Caprice, and Caprice said she'd take him. Where's the van? Oh, I had tonight playing out differently in my mind. We got a baby to find. Hank, where's the baby? I don't know. Oh. Allie, it's me. Uh, just wanted to let you know that everything's going great here. We're all good. Um, we're going to take a little trip to the hospital. Life is about finding the meaning and the joy and the purpose in all the chaos. Hun, your job. It's hard, I know. Important, that's what I was gonna say. The worst night ever. I honestly don't know how it could get any worse. Stand down. How dare you? My husband is passionate. Sir, he just came in here and started. That was an accident. <laughs> okay, great trailer. A little bit of fun there. Okay, so it looks a little more exciting than I thought. I got the bikers in there, you know, that'll make it a little more interesting. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mom's Night Out premieres this weekend. Go check it out and uh, support a uh, great message to build up and celebrate motherhood. Uh, but now we've got with us AJ's Fantastic, Skip and AJ's Fantastic Voyage. Uh, and this is, a, this is a great program, and this, uh, this is a fantastic organization, Lumen TV, with uh, Brian Shields and Dr. Tom Stanley and Rich Morrow with us here tonight. Brian, good to have you. Good to be here. All right. Thank and you. Dr. Tom Stanley and Rich, give me a little... <laughs> there you go, man. <sighs> distance there. So uh, they're with us here tonight. We're going to talk about this uh, great program, The Alter Gang. That's right. You know, and this is animation. I love this night. This is a media night being brought to you through media. Hey, and again, St. Uh, John figure. Paul II. Yeah, go figure. We use media to bring you media. That's it kind of right. works that way, doesn't That's it? Right. Yeah, we got this great little board here we're going to get into in a minute about media. You're all wondering when you see this, what is this, this felt board back here? 
This was just something I was doing before the show. Just cutting out felt and sticking it on the board. <laughs> You're an artist. I, well, you know, I, you are. I get it from you, Brian. Well, You're an inspiration to me. I taught you the two things I know. Yeah, I appreciate that <laughs> very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. So, <laughs> oh, no, there's more to it. Brian, tell us about Lumen TV, why you've gotten this started, and why, uh, why Skip and AJ's Fantastic right. Voyage. Why? All these questions. I, uh, I started in the media, you know, at 15, got an agent, did all this kind of stuff, um, and uh, had some success. Did, you know, I was in a commercial with Michael Jordan and uh, Montel Williams. I was in a series on HBO. It's called From Earth to the Moon. Hmm. And, um, and ab about that time, my career started taking off, and I grew up Catholic. However, I uh, was kind of falling away. And uh, fortunately, I met a cute girl who invited me to a retreat. So I went on this retreat, had this incredible experience with the Eucharist. And um, no, I'm sorry. The intention of the retreat was for the Eucharist or for the cute girl. Oh well, exactly. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. So I knew the answer was in there somewhere. Yeah, bing, 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 winner. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it was. I mean, literally, it was the first retreat I had ever been on, and I was like 22 or three at the time. So, but. I can't tell you, it changed my life. Mm. I mean, they had a benediction and they came around and I'm thinking, all these people are like, oh, hallelujah, praising and singing. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel like a fish out of water, you know? I don't know what to do. I don't, what is this adoration? So, but I reached out and I touched that monstrance mm. and because I wanted to pray for my mom and he zapped me. Mm. And I just, I'm, I'm see, I don't know what to say, Father, you know, maybe, I don't know what to tell you. But it was like, it changed my life. And then, this is the funny part, like two weeks later, how God works, right? I got called up to meet the producers of a show called Dawson's Creek. Mm -hmm. And this was before anybody knew what Dawson's Creek was. So, and I'm driving home after meeting the producers and it looked great, my agent's telling me everything looks great and I'm, this is the first time I don't want the role. And it's really because I realized at that point, these guys are pushing immorality to teenagers. And how am I gonna do that, you know? So. Uh, Slight conflict of interest there. A little bit oil and water. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? So, uh, but literally, I felt like if they would have handed me a, uh, a contract, I would have signed it. You know, because I was just a guppy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a new fish. Yeah, I got, so, I, um, I just prayed and literally the Lord did gave me a way out. And they offered me, either, they changed their minds, they want you on this other show, and they sent me the other show. And I, they got the script and I read, I was like, oh, it's the same garbage, you know? So, and I knew the Lord was saying, the first one's on me, then this one's on you. So, um, so anyways, that put the nail in the coffins because I said no of my acting career, you know, mm -hmm. and um, went out and worked with St. Luke Productions and uh, we started having children and Christopher's our oldest. And about that time, I was like, I need some like good Catholic media stuff for my kids. So uh, that's where the altar gang came from. But the, the one thing is, and, uh, and I wanted to, sh I brought this flannel gram because we're so visual. Does anybody get that? Hello, <laughs> I'm the church lady here. Okay. So this is like, we're going to call him Billy. No, let's call him Doug. This is Doug. <laughs> they got the same amount of hair. No, I'm just. <laughs> so, well, okay, sir. Getting a little personal. If you, t if you look at, at Doug's life. I think okay, you're pretty accurate. Though, uh, well, I, well, maybe in a few more years. You look at the chin. So he wakes up in the morning, right? He spends breakfast times getting ready for school. All this red, he's in school seven hours a day. Mom picks him up, then brings home and comes home because mom is, is good. Doug's mom is a great mom. So she makes him do his homework first. Then he's got free time. Somewhere around here, the family gets together for dinner. And then he's got more free time till bed, right? Mm -hmm. So now look at the purple, if your color balance is good. So the purple is, he says, grace before breakfast, he gets to school because he goes to a great Catholic school because he's in Lincoln, Nebraska. So they pray probably a zillion times, but they pray here. Let's say they change classes and they do the glory be. And then lunchtime, oh, let's stay the bless us, O Lord. That takes a solid 30 seconds. And then at the end of the day, they send him home, but not without a nice prayer. And so then Bill, or Doug is on his own until bless us, O Lord, for dinner, right? Yeah. And then, and maybe at the end, before mom tucks them in, maybe they all get together and say a little prayer. That's Billy's day with prayer. Hmm. But the big thing is, is that there is this statistic that says, Doug, I call him Billy, sorry, it's Doug, yeah. but you, not you, would do this. But he's spending almost seven hours a day with the media. So where is, where is the media in his life? Well, you look at his free time. I'm just going to do this quick, you know, if all you, like, 
super mathematical people don't measure it out too much. But like he's spending about, you know, say, three hours there, spending his time there. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to cover prayer time. Probably when he wakes up and he's watching something on the Cartoon Network, you know, before he goes or he's on his little iPhone or something mm -hmm. like that. And then on the drive home, what's he doing? He's probably on the, he's on the phone playing a little app right there. But that's still, this is not all Doug's media time. Mm -hmm. Doug, what are you doing in school? Maybe you got a little computer class or something like that. That'd be special. <laughs> Maybe you got a little watch a movie at school, yeah. you know, but still, no, not enough. But he shows you something on his phone right after lunch and you end up the day somewhere in there watching a little something. If you look at this, I mean, look, what's the biggest influence in this kid's life? Yeah, a lot of media. It's a lot of media. And compared to the prayer time and the parent time, it's no wonder. And this is a fact, according to the Barna Research Group, the media is the number one influence in a child's life. And, and the point you're getting at here, uh, which I like so much, is that we're not going to take the media out of the kids' lives. You can't. You're not going to remove the movie theaters. You're no. not going to take the apps. You're not going to get rid of the smartphones, no. computers. These things are all there. iPads are all there. Right. So what we need to do is what St. John Paul II told us to do, and, and, and many have said, is that we need in our modern times to engage in it. Right. And we need to go in it with, with the warrior spirit to That's really... Right engage in that battle for hearts and souls and minds. That's right. And you've done that with, I know, with uh, uh, the uh, Skip and AJ's Fantastic Voyage. we got the trailer we're going to show right now, and if we come back to the trailer, you're going to really unpack this for us, you gentlemen, and let Absolutely. us know why this is so important, why this is a fantastic program starting. It's, it's, it's actually premiering tonight. So let's check this out, the uh, trailer for Skip and AJ's Fantastic Voyage. I got an idea. Your ship is ready, sir. Ship? Uh, oh, looks like you guys are building something. What is it? It's a shrink a machine. Time machine. A shrink time machine? So, when's the baby due? Three weeks left. I can't believe it went by so fast. You mean we're going in there? Affirmative. And we're going to see things no ultra object has ever seen. We're under attack! That's the second largest attack I've ever seen. Number one, remind me of the purpose of our mission again. Sir! It's to make contact with the baby in the belly and help you get a clue. Well, my sister has four kids. She keeps telling me when the baby is on the way to remember to breathe. <sighs> like that. Give me all you can muster! Engaging superfluous speed. Destination straight ahead. Uh, turn left! Turn left! Watch out! Watch out! Remember to breathe! Ah! Lost, lost, lost satellite, satellite signal. Recalculating. Did you see that? We're about to make contact with the onboard. Ah! We come in peace. Well, he doesn't speak English. Let's go. Here, this will translate for us. Dear baby, we come to learn what it's like to be a baby in the valley. Baby, we're gonna need your help. Let's do this. Baby, on my count. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast up! I can feel the love already. All right, now, obviously, your voice is in there somewhere, Brian. That's right. Because <laughs> you were sounding a bit like this before the show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Skiff. I play Skiff. Yeah. The incense boat. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. So let's get into this a bit. First right. of all, let's work down the line here. Now, Dr. Stanley, um, I know you're, the, the whole DVD itself has mm -hmm. more to it than I think they're probably going to air right off the bat on the, right. on the network here. That's right. But you, you do this fantastic piece where you go into detail explaining more. This is a, a teaching tool. That's right. Uh, Dr. Stanley, tell us a bit, you know, it's not just a 30 minute of animation, it's 30 minutes of instruction to children on their level about the preciousness and the value of life. Right. I started out 18 years ago, my son was in middle school, and. Um, I felt like they weren't instructing them on pro-life issues enough, so I was going to do it. And I got into the class and uh, gave them an anti-abortion talk, and I bombed. The kids were screwing around the back of the classroom, and I knew I wasn't very good. Went home and thought about it, and thought about it, and prayed about it, and it came to me that I was instructing them on something that was wrong without telling them what was right. And it really came to me that I had to tell them why life was so good so they could really understand why it was wrong to take it away. And uh, the next year, uh, I gave an entirely new talk. Uh, these two men know that I've had, uh, in my early part of my career, my wife was very patient, Julia, because she stuck with me through many jobs. I was the kind of guy who couldn't hold the job, sort of. But at each job, I met somebody who was very valuable in my life. And this was the premise of my talk. I started off telling people about valuable people in my life and how they meant a lot to me and, and made a big impact upon me. And as I told the p kids at different ages about these people, uh, I'd look into their eyes and I'd say, you know, I see some valuable people here. Mm -hmm. And I went around the class and imagine all four-year-olds and even 80-year-olds, and I've done this too, and I said, I'm gonna touch on the head. I don't want you to be proud or brag, but let me touch on. I'd touch them and I'd say, stand up so the rest of the class can see you. And, and they'd stand up and to see the look in their eye asking me to please touch me and be valuable. <laughs> and eventually as I go around the room, I touched a few and then eventually them all, and they'd all be standing and they'd be laughing and giggling and they know my trick. But as it came to be, I said, you know, I wasn't joking. And I bring out the scripture in Genesis and in Psalm 139 and Jeremiah and explain to them how they really were valuable. And then I'd bring out my babies, my models, mm. and I'd have from seven weeks gestation to seven months, and I'd show them they look so real. And I explained to them that each one of them, how their heart was beating and how they were moving and how they were hearing their mom and hearing their dad and hearing their brother and sister come home. And, and, and how if you'd pinch them or touch them with a pen, it would hurt. Uh, and then I'd take the babies and I'd, I'd say, now which one of these is when you were little was, was valuable? And I'd show them the seven-month-old ginger station all the way down to seven week and as, as small as the little fingernail on your little finger. And they'd vote as to which one was valuable. And, and uh, subsequently I said, well, they're all valuable. But then I'd pull out my pen and I'd say, but it was really when each one of you was smaller than the tip of a pen that God took time out of a very busy schedule to breathe over your mother and give you life. And that at that very split second, is when you became valuable. You know, you know Dr. Stan, everything you just talk about here uh, fits right in line even with what that first interview at the beginning of the show with Sarah mm -hmm. uh, Drew was about, yeah. where she talks about trying to find that value yeah. and yeah. feeling like you have to kind of own up yeah. to something before God, yeah. but that yeah. God, your, your value is dependent upon the very fact that God is, has, has breathed existence yeah. into you. I thought you set us up with that. I thought that was wonderful. <laughs> but, but Doug, I've gotten some neat letters back and from kids, and I think the teachers make them write me the letters, but a letter that says, I didn't know I was valuable. Mm -hmm. One little, little boy wrote and told me, he said, all the kids have made fun of me and told me I was worthless. And it almost makes you cry to read this letter from him. He says, but now I know I'm valuable. So I think this is one of the greatest attacks of the enemy, to plant those seeds of doubt, to doubt our very value, just the very mm -hmm. fact that God, yeah. God really, really thinks a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And as the saying goes, if you don't believe the Creator, God the Creator, believe God the Redeemer, who yeah. died for you. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's just a powerful, powerful truth to know and needs to be taught at a young age and then reinforced in every way possible. And that's, I think, you've got a fantastic uh, program to do this. And yeah. we've got to go to a clip, I'm being told, this is called I Got an Idea. Brian, do we need to set it up at all? Or sure. Well, the can two, you give us an idea of what it's about? I'll try. <laughs> so, actually, Tom Stanley comes to visit the church at, that Skiff and AJ live in. And, uh, and they, Skiff, is so excited because he just heard the talk. And AJ, of course, being the goof that he is, slept through the talk. 
So now Skiff is trying to explain it to his knucklehead buddy. Okay, all right, check this out. Got an idea from Skiff and AJ's Fantastic Voyage. I love the smell of mustard in the morning. AJ, AJ, wake up! What? Where's my ship? Where's my perfect crew? Where's my hot dog? AJ, I can't believe it. You missed the whole thing. Yeah, well... I was navigating an intergalactic spaceship through undiscovered territory. And I was doing a pretty good job, too. Dr. Stanley told us how amazing and special God made each person, even in their mommy's belly, even when they were super small, teensy weensy. They were special. They just needed time to grow. Oh, I've seen this before. This is an inkblot test. Eh, hmm. Oh, I see two elephants driving race cars in the opposite direction. No, AJ, it's a baby. It's a baby in the belly. What is this? <laughs> it looks like one of those marshmallow bunnies. AJ, you should have listened to the talk. It was about life. It was about value and why God created us. And laga 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 laga. Uh, I have no clue what you're saying. I got an idea. <laughs> uh, the animation's incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Rich, yeah. how do you how do you get this level of animation? Uh, it, it, it's very very time consuming, and you have to be very very dedicated. And uh, like other Hollywood films, we were privileged to work with uh, animators from Pixar, from Veggie Tales, very committed and. Um, Brian kind of steered the ship, and it's very time-consuming. But as you can see, the end results is just mm. is just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I'm excited about this movie in particular because uh, it has so much, so many layers. So I, I think we go deeper than Veggie Tales. We go mm. into the faith. Um, we're going to see a clip coming up about, uh, you know, um, the breath of God. I mean, we're going to see stuff in cartoons that. Um, praise and worship the Lord, and uh, it, it's great stuff. Animation, there's no limits creatively. So. I, I have to admit, when I saw it, when I, when I watched the whole thing, I, I, I was really taken by the journey mm. when they, they, they go down the woman's throat. And not to be a you know, <laughs> spoiler here, but people understand what's going to happen. They're going to get inside. You said, why'd you do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the trailer originally, Brian. Come on, you had to get okay, in there. Right. We saw the little tonsil thing. I, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> take a left, take a left. <laughs> um, but the, the explosiveness of it almost looks like the, like the formation of a universe, you know, like mm, something you'd right. see in, in a science fiction movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I'm assuming that's what you were aiming for because that's what came across. It was just kind of mesmerized by this animation of the explosiveness of a new of a new entity, of a new life there. Well, it's that's incredible. that's like what Dr. Stanley talks about in this talk is he talks about these I can't do it as well as he does but the trillions of blood cells and and the miles and miles of veins and all the of blood vein vessels right and like all this stuff is in our body is it's like a universe uh, you know inside here mm -hmm. you know just inside with us so that was the idea in a sense was yeah. to try to incorporate that see when I look at something like this and I see that the value of something like this is, is incredible considering we're dealing with uh, in America alone um, over 57 million abortions mm, yeah. that have taken place and and not even just the abortion industry which in and of itself is is so diabolical and so hurtful and harmful yeah. to so many on so many levels but even this is a this is a, a film that made me appreciate much more the message of the value of who you are as a human being yeah. when you consider how many people out there are struggling with depression you know, loneliness, mm -hmm. and they turn to addiction and other crutches to try to make themselves feel a little better. And I know, Father, as a priest, you run into that all the time um, with the people who come to you. Um, the value of something like this could be tremendously helpful, can it not? Well, absolutely. And even like uh, Dr. Stanley was saying, just for our young people especially, to have that conscious awareness of God's love for them. They get so lost in the shuffle and busyness of the world today, you know. That's one of the reasons why we decided to focus on this young age, because uh, another stat is by the age of nine, their moral foundation is in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really those formative years right. that, I mean, are crucial. And going into the schools, that's one of the things we're trying to do with it, is to get this into the hands of children in the classroom so everyone gets one. Because, you know, so many of these families, they're not on the, they're not on the wavelength 
of EW10, unfortunately, or any kind of Christian right. network or something like that, and they're not, they're not buying those faith-forming materials. So. And that's the point that should be made, is that this is not just a, a program to air on the network, on EWTN, but this is, you actually have a whole strategy here. You're getting yeah. into schools, yeah. and, and this is on your website, Lumen. Lumen.tv. Lumen.tv. Go to that website, ladies and gentlemen, check it out, because you do have, um, uh, you know, movement getting into That's schools, right. getting into classrooms, and this is this is ultimately what you're, I mean, can, Rich, can you tell us a little bit about what your, your the end game here is with this? The, the end game is, as Brian's vision always been, is to get into the schools. Um, the Knights of Columbus have been helping us, but we want to reach out to every parish, every school. If you want this in your school, go to Lumen.tv. We'll help to get the video in. Um, the Knights have been sponsoring videos, individuals have been sponsoring videos in a lot of the poor parishes, mm -hmm. in inner schools. Um, people who have not been exposed to the faith or even um, we're trying to get into every child's hands. It's a very entertaining movie. It's a family movie. Mm -hmm. um, um, so um, we've been getting the support with bishops and EWTN has been wonderful in um, premiering it tonight and uh, I think Saturday morning. Um, so, you know, so that's yeah. basically the plan. Get it out there across the field, a battlefield, and it, it is a fight for um, for the hearts and minds, starting mm -hmm. at a very young age. Uh, next clip is uh, what will it be? Can like, what will it be like? Oh. It's a musical. What it's a like? musical. <laughs> and basically, you gonna sing for us? I will, but <laughs> you might not want me to. Okay. So basically, it's this, the t the parents are wondering what it's going to be like to have the baby, and the baby's wondering what it's going to be like to be, you know, outside the womb. Okay. All right, here you go. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. What will it be like? Your mom and dad love you very much. You're very valuable to them. I can feel you growing down there in my womb, keeping all cozy and warm. We'll count down the days, gonna see you soon Chose your first little outfit for you to adorn Daddy laughs at your hand, or maybe it's a fight We can't, can't wait, wait for, for the day you are born What will it be like, what will it be like To hold you for the very first time What will it be like, what will it be like You're a gift from above and we're honored that we will be your family for the rest of your life. What will it be like? Well, the doctor just said he's gonna run some tests. Honey, everything will be alright. Either way, it doesn't matter. You are one of Kind and we, we will hug and kiss and love you till the end of time Our Lord has a plan, it's for him to understand So let's enjoy the great adventure in store What will it be like, what will it be like To hold you for the very first time What will it be like, what will it be like To see you're a gift from above and we're honored that we will be your family for the rest of your life. What will it be like? What will it be like? What will it be like? What will it be You know, there's not one of us who doesn't desire that kind of unconditional love that really is illustrated in that song and that, yeah. that piece. Um, and there, there isn't one of us who isn't created for that. Uh, everybody wants that kind of warmth, that kind of safety, that kind of protection, and that kind of, That's right. you know, th that mother and father there together. Right. 
you know, and even in, in, the, in the difficult moments, the tragic moments where, you know, uh, there may be a miscarriage or a loss of life, yeah. uh, it makes me think about um, a very good friend of mine, Eric Jenis, who has some music on That's here. right. Some yeah. of his music is in this film. And he and his wife have lost seven children. They have four, but they've lost seven. They've lost five to miscarriage, and they had two babies that were born, two separate occasions, mm -hmm. lived for about three or four hours, literally died in their arms. Wow. And I remember asking Eric, you know, when his first one, Joseph Michael, passed away many years ago, he and I were get, getting ready to go to a presentation. And his wife actually told him, go anyway. And it's where we actually met Mother Angelica. And it opened the door to be able to come to Life on the Rock and, and, uh, or to EWTN and tape the Passion Meditation. But, but what, he, what he said was, I held my child there knowing that the value of this life was in God's hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my job was just to do what I could while I had him here. And he said, I just held him there for the few hours that I did until God took him home. Yeah. Wow. And it's something powerful. beautiful and powerful. And I thought about that a little bit in there. When they show them go to the doctor's office, there's, there's, they're right. going to run there's some that, tests. Right. Because that's part yeah, of this, being a parent right. and the struggle right. with this. Right. Yeah. So I love the fact that you've touched on that. You don't, not everything is all roses. That's there right. are those moments of challenge and difficulty. Did any of us who are, who are married and have children know um, go with being a parent? And they're very difficult, very difficult times. Yeah. Now explain, can you, one of you, why the man is built the way he is? Because he looks like a lot of guys I used to lift weights with, where they only benched and curled, they never did anything with the legs, they never squatted. You know? That's right. Hefty, hefty, hefty. That's right. Whippy, whippy. We're going to go back to Doug. No. <laughs> no. Exactly. Yeah. But what, why, is there a reason why he sure. looks this way? Well, it was kind of like this idea that he has a weak foundation. Okay. So he's all, you know, he's a muscle head, but he's got to get it right here in the heart. Right. So that's the, that was the idea there. I know it's always very striking, but could you imagine, like, if we could see spiritually what we looked like yeah. physically? I would look hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> kind of like the amusement park, uh, amusement park mirrors. Yeah. That are all <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now we got another clip on being told, Breath of God. Who wants to set this oh, up to oh, tell oh. us about it? The, I, I explained to the kids that, that, like I told you before, that before their parents even knew they were going to have a baby, it was God who was over their mother, breathed life and a soul into them. Right. And that soul is what made them valuable. And, uh, and we go back all the way from the seven weeks being smaller than the fingernail in your little finger to being just one half a cell and half a cell to become one cell. Mm -hmm. And that's when you become valuable. That's the breath of God moment. Powerful. Before mom even knows she has a child in her womb, God has already breathed his image and likeness into this child, into each one of us. Uh, here it is, Breath of God. Whoa! Too far back! Seven months ago. Hey, you're smaller than me now. Getting closer. Day one. This must be the breath of God moment. The very beginning. He's still a baby. I mean, clearly one of the best parts about this is the comedy. I mean, the, the message is powerful, but, yeah. you know, I think as you said, you know, Dr. Stanley earlier, is that, you know, to present it to the kids in such a way as your first talk went um, kind of south, uh, your second one reached them by approaching it from a different angle. Absolutely. And that's really what you're doing is you're, you're, you're using different, different approaches here to try to reach these hearts and minds. Yeah. And the humor is, is excellent, and then you've got kind of the... The, the standard operating goofy guy and the straight guy. Right. You know, right. And, uh, you get to play the straight guy. Which, I'm straight guy. Which doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't somehow understand. I feel like you could have played the goofy guy. <laughs> it's a stretch. It's an Abbott Costello moment I there. Know. You could have been either one. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, who play, and who plays the, uh, the funny Masney. guy? Mike Masney. Okay. Mike yeah. Masney. So he's funnier than me. And yeah. that's why. <laughs> so, but you know, this, I, I have to say, is that it is the providence of God that Dr. Stanley and ourselves got put together. It really is. And, uh, 
and it was kind of like me as a parent trying to find something to deal with the life issue with my kids. Mm -hmm. And everything I was saying was exactly like your first talk. And so, I mean, it was, it's a true blessing. It was a true blessing and just to be able to base it on that. And so, um, and so it's very inspiring. To see Dr. Stanley do his thing in person is, is something else. And that's the thing is that he's, can I tell him? Go ahead. Okay, he's going to retire as a, as a pediatrician, mm. and he's going to travel the country talking to children. Uh, awesome. Oh, so excellent. I'm yeah. available. That's right. <laughs> excellent. For Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, excellent. Right. Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, and I think and people, if they get the DVD, they'll be able to see you because there's the 30 yeah. minute animated piece, but then there's 30 minutes of you guys working together, right. you know, live with, you know, the, in, you're in the ship, is what you are. It looks it's like amazing. There. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Um, and you got the kids there, and you're giving the whole presentation to the kids, and I just thought it was incredibly well done. Yeah. Um, now, you got a film camp too. Talk about Lumen TV's film camp. That's right. Some of these guys back here are from film camp, so that we brought them along. Yeah. But it basically, it's a nine day intensive training to take <laughs> people who are interested in filmmaking. And where parents are always like, I, my kid has this desire to be a filmmaker, but I don't want them to lose their soul. Right. So our idea is to say, no, be a filmmaker and you don't have to lose your soul. So we take them and we train them, we teach them about what the church says about the media. You know, and also they work with professionals in the industry. And by the end of this nine days, they've created a short film that will premiere in a local theater. They get a cool T-shirt. Some of my kids are wearing the previous year's cool T-shirts. T-shirts so are very cool. T-shirts are cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we just bring guys in. And we just mentor them. We yeah. we cap it off at ten. So it, this year is June twentieth to the twenty eighth. So. Uh, you better get in contact with us. If more information, Lumen.tv. Lumen.tv. Yeah, Rich, why do you think these film camps are so important? I, I think it gives a lot of um, young people who are deep into their faith an opportunity to express themselves artistically with professionals, um, give them all the nuts and bolts of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've watched um, kids like David back there know nothing about filmmaking and now he's producing and directing his films, entering it into festivals. And this is how we're going to influence that gray area, gray area of the media, yeah. um, getting young people involved with all the media and yeah. making their movies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, and something like this is, is, uh, is geared towards inspiring the heart to use the talents for the right, right reason. Right. Because in the end, nothing else matters. No. And it's all, and everything we do has to be based on prayer. Mm -hmm. That book, Soul of Apostolate, if mm -hmm. you haven't read it, I'm sure, read it. Whatever camera, read it. <laughs> because it's incredible. It really tells you how you need to enter into the media. So if you're a filmmaker or whatever you want to do, you've got to focus on prayer. Because our biggest, our biggest weapon is truth. Mm -hmm. You can create beauty with truth. It's almost mathematical mm -hmm. in a sense, mm -hmm. you know. So and Skip and AJ would definitely encourage the same thing. Skiff and AJ pray constantly. Yeah. They live in a church. <laughs> sure, it's a CG church, but too bad. We got a, we got a, uh, a trailer now, uh, or a clip from the film camp. Uh, okay. Anything you need to say about it, or does it speak for itself? It's, uh, all I can say is this year's uh, theme is Herod Punches Pilot. Okay, all film right. camp, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> that piece wasn't added. Yeah, it's a very groovy film, Kansas. That's right. Sounds that's like. right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, but yeah. it's intense. You yeah. know, we work them to the bone because that's what it's like in the industry. You get yeah. these crazy calls. So it's, it's like a hand-to-hand -hand combat training session. <laughs> yes. In film. It's in film. like battle-ready film. I like it. I like it. I like where this is going. Yeah, he's got me good. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, so. just a few minutes left, and we're and, and we're going to wrap this up. Yeah. I mean, you made some you made some great points. Powerful project here. Yeah. It's going to air it, tonight. Tonight, 10, 10 o'clock, ten p.m. Okay. And then Saturday, May tenth, at uh, ten thirty a.m. Okay. So, I mean, my big encouragement is, you know, the priest. And, and the principles that are out there. And if you want to bring us to your parish, we want to help you get it there. We want to make it possible to do. So watch it. You can watch it and check it out, yeah. you know, and we want to make a ton more of these. So we need people to support what we're doing. All right, and I just, I just want to add to that, um, that this is one of those messages that, you know, as much as we can curse the darkness, we know that the, the divorce rate was where it's at, the addiction rate is where it's at because of people's depression, discouragement, and loneliness, and not recognizing their value. And we, we know that the abortion rate is, is through the roof and it's unbelievable yeah. and it's incomprehensible that we've let this go as it has. We need to fight this fight on all these fronts and this is a powerful, powerful way to do it. So I want to encourage everybody out there as well to go to Lumen.tv, connect with this, try to bring it into your parish, your schools, your, your, your churches, you know, bishops, priests, lay people, anybody and everybody get on board with this and let's, let's, let's work together to make this happen. Uh, Dr. Stanley, any closing comments or parting shots? Um, we love to speak to high schools and middle schools and adult groups and pro-life groups, and, uh, and we can pass the film through that way too, but particularly high schools need to be addressed. Excellent. Okay, Thank very you. good. I agree with that. Rich? Oh, if they, if they like the movie, write to EWTN, call them, tell them we like this and we want to Hound see a lot them. more of it. Yeah. 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 Hound them. And that is the thing. It, we, we've got to speak out. We've got to, we've got to comment and sure. acknowledge when these things are great. I just have a question for you. Any stuffed animals coming up to like your, your stuffed oh, toys yeah. of Skiff and AJ? Wouldn't Actually, be a stuffed animal, I'm sorry, a stuffed uh, <laughs> incense or anything. No, right, right. <laughs> We're just going to make them out of solid lead. So, <laughs> so yeah, we've so got ideas. So it as a weapon as well as a toy, yeah. yeah we do have ideas. But it was kind of like we're, we're really focused on getting it out. Yeah. But, we, you know, we're, gonna, we're making some T-shirts and stuff like that Good. and get them from the website. So, uh, yeah, that's the big thing. And actually, you know, one other thing is that the, the, in Los Angeles Diocese, or for the state of California, the Knights of Columbus have really gotten behind it. And they're doing a big push at their state convention. So Excellent. any of the knights that are out in California, if they go look for the booth, there's a booth there somewhere. There you go. And to you other knights out there, let's uh, let's step up and join with the other knights and get this job done. Yeah. Brian, awesome Doug, job. Thank, thank you, you very much, us. Dr. Stanley. Thank, thank you, you. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Father, as only you can take us out. May the Lord bless you and keep you, show his face to you and be merciful to you, turn his countenance to you and give you peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will see you again next week.